I talk about what happened on Rampage, and believe me, it ain't that much worth talking about anyways, I want to talk a moment or two about Tony Khan unleashing several tweets in response to an attacking Fox News and their coverage of AEW. And I, I realize in the land of Khan I stand that a lot of you are going to defend this guy to the hilt no matter what. But this is the same clown show that was part of a decision by the Jaguars organization. And if you think he wasn't a big part of this, you are mistaken, that wanted to hire Urban Meyer this year. And dude didn't even make it a full season. Like, let's get some perspective here. Um, I get, I don't want to knock a guy for defending his company and his product. You know, but the thing is, is that if you're mad about somebody involved with Fox News talking about how viewership has dipped since, you know, the signings of CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Adam Cole... Like, be mad at yourself, not them. If anything's happened, you've dropped the ball. If anything's happened, it's your failures. And, that, and that's somewhat unfair, but not entirely. The larger point I'm getting at here is, Tony Khan to me is frustrating sometimes, not because of the cult of personality that's around him. It's the lack of focus on the things that matter. Like, he's attacking talking about the dipshits at Fox News and how his show has beaten all of their marquee shows in the ratings over the past several weeks. Now, of course, he's only referencing the demo and not total viewers, but the reality is, is Fox News doesn't care as much about that demo because they know that's not the game they're playing. They're not targeting 18 to 49-year-olds. They're targeting more 50-plus White conservatives. That's who they're targeting. So you're going after them with one metric and they're not even using the same metric. They don't care. That's not the game they're playing. And as much as you can knock Fox News on a variety of different levels, there is absolutely no comparison in terms of mainstream impacts of AEW, even from a wrestling standpoint, let alone cop pop culture standpoint to Fox News and the American political system and discourse over the past 25 years. Like AEW is but a skid mark in the underpants of the world that Fox News has built. So focus on your own shit, Tony. Because you're going after them and you're not even playing the same game. It's not just not even in the same business. You're not even playing the same game. They're not going after 18 to 49 because they know that's not their jam. They know that that's not their audience. They're going after the 50 plus overreactionary white conservative Christians, male and female. You're going after male 18 to 49. Like we've got to stop defending a guy like this when he does shit like this because it's stupid. It's counterproductive. And it does nothing to grow his brand. Maybe it plays well in the echo chamber of the cult of personality in the land of Khan I stand, but the reality is, is it just doesn't. Tony, if anything, they're right. Like, if you're going to be that insecure and that unable to handle any type of criticism, like that's not a good place for AEW in the future. You've got to be able to grow some thicker skin here. Because again, if I look at Rampage this week, like we could see why viewership is down. We could see why people don't care that much. We could see why you're not retaining a sizable portion of your Dynamite Wednesday night audience to Rampage on Friday night. Like you fouled up what ultimately ended up being the Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns segment, which was the one good thing about SmackDown. And you're turning around and you're following up with the elite versus the best friends where you've got Adam Cole, who was one of your big gifts of a couple of minutes, months ago, part of a losing mat team on a match. Like That's not how this should be done. Adam Cole is one of your most overperformers in the company, period. This dude can get a pop and a massive reaction. And you've made him into a background player already. 
It doesn't matter if a Fox News or some other media site is criticizing you in the loss of viewership. Fans should be criticizing you because that's stupid. And I know you're appealing to a lot of match and moves are all that matters, Marks. But they're not helping you. That's why your product is not growing. And this is a perfect example of it. And as far as the whole thing, you, you have kind of this insecurity of you want to be viewed as a big boy. Well, then play like a big boy. Start airing this shit live. Friday nights. Run an hour and a half, two hour house show before you actually get to the TV taping portion. I don't care how you do it. Like, I get why right now it's not live, but no, you got to step up to the plate. You want to play with the big boys and play with the big boys. You're not doing that right now. And the tape stuff hurts because, like, I'm sitting there watching and I'm saying, I really came off of the Brock and Roman segment and this is what I get? This is dumb. And then I wanted to be excited about Dan Lambert being back on TV because he's one of the few people in AEW that can cut an effective damn promo and get some real heat. I'm a heat mark as much as anything else. I'm a mark for stories and promos and characters and reactions, but the right types of reactions. But Dan Lambert gets that Cornette type of reaction like if you had dropped Jim Cornette in and let him be Jim Cornette. That's the type of reaction you would get from this audience. Dan Lambert, same thing. But of course, they've got to find a way to fucking shoehorn Cody Rhodes into this crap. Cody Rhodes, I swear to God, is the most forced character in wrestling today. I'll go even further. I'll say he was more forced, he's more forced now than John Cena was a few years ago. Because at least I can say with John Cena, he could sometimes pull a great promo out of his ass. And frankly, some of his matches were also better. And he knew how to be a top guy. Cody Rhodes doesn't have any of that fucking going for him. He's more forced than Charlotte 50 Faces of Flair. Oh yeah! Speaking of insecure, narcissistic idiots that are out of touch, that are trying to play a joke on everybody, but they're only playing a joke on themselves, it's Cody Rhodes. Oh, his brother came back! Yay! It's key, though. We gotta make sure Dustin gets that push. Because the future is now, damn it! Don't need these young bucks. They can wait. Anyways. Now you had a submission match between Ty Conti and Penelope Ford. And you wonder why your viewership of Rampage is not that great. I don't want to hear fucking excuses about time slots or anything like that. That's excuses. Booking shit like Ty Conti versus Penelope Ford in any type of submission match, continuing to put Penelope Ford in the ring in wrestling matches, you get the viewership and ratings you deserve. Not good. As far as the Owen Hart Cup tournament being announced, and talk about that coming up in May, don't have much of an opinion on that right now. It's cool. Like... Any place that we can celebrate the legacy of an Owen Hart, I am down for. I am down for. Uh, but the main event was a 10-man tag, and the best part about this, honestly, when it was over, and Jurassic Express came in and made the save, and you had the face down between them and the Lucha Bros. Yeah, inject that into my veins. But again, the Lucha Bros have been shitty tag champs. Not their fault. They're just put into bad spots. They should have never been the tag champs. It should have been the Jurassic Express that won these damn belts. So hopefully they're going to right this wrong, but it just doesn't feel the same since it wasn't the Jurassic Express that beat the Young Bucks. I mean, that was a cool moment at the end, but... Like, at the very beginning of Rampage a few months back, I heard, I think it was Excalibur, talk about this is the fastest 60 minutes in pro wrestling. Fuck, I wish it actually lived up to that, because that could be the identity. But they've got very blasé and very formulaic in terms of what they do. Part of that is because it's only an hour. Part of that is because they're taped. Part of that is for a variety of different factors. It's just when you look at this, the elite versus the best friends. Okay, Trent gets some shine. Cool. What about Adam Cole? One of your big acquisitions for a couple of months ago. You haven't really done effective shit with him at all. Dan Lambert's back just so that way Cody Rhodes can appear, just so that way you're an excuse to show Dustin Rhodes. Like, 
These are not needle movers. These are not things that are going to make for exciting television. They just don't. Like, I mean, if you, what I've talked about here in terms of the actual show, like if I put that on paper, and sometimes when you write it down on paper, I understand it could be misleading. But if you looked at this, you'd probably say, hey, the Elite versus Best Friends match is probably a good match, but it's stupid that Adam Cole is part of teams that keep losing matches. Well, that's, that's absolutely what happened here. Dan Lambert returns. Oh, of course Cody's got to return, and of course he's got to try and bang back Dustin in order so that way he can try and still be a babyface. Exactly, because he's more overforced than even Charlotte 50 faces a flare. Oh, we put Ty Conti and Penelope Ford in a submission match. I'm sure that went well. Exactly. Like, look at this show and tell me why more people should watch this. You can't. Like as we go into 2022, it's time to expect and demand better than this. You're a newer company, my ass. You've been doing it over two years now. You've been successful. Time to get better. So if you're asking fans to tune in for an hour on Friday night, we should be able to get better than what we got this week.